Hi everyone, my name is Clyde de Souza and welcome to the crash course on Confluence. Now the purpose of this video is to get you familiarized with this amazing product and get you very comfortable using Confluence. Now Confluence is one of the best documentation tools out there. So you might want to watch at the entirety of this video series. This crash course has been split into multiple parts. Uh, so you might want to also watch uh, all the videos in this series here on YouTube. We will cover some of the basic Confluence tips and also some of the slightly advanced features of Confluence. By the end of this entire crash course on Confluence, you will start to write amazing documentation using this product. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, what is Confluence? Well, Confluence is one of the best documenting tools that's available out there. And so if you are working in a company, um, you may or may not have used, uh, but I'm sure you'll certainly use this product uh, at, at some place where you, where you end up working. Um, it is an enterprise software and, and there's a whole bunch of other products that come under the Atlassian uh, product, under the Atlassian umbrella uh, and Confluence is just one of uh, one of the, their products. Uh, but it is um, an absolutely amazing, amazing tool to, um, to document uh, because it makes it so much easier to write content very, very seamless. Um, and very seamless to collaborate as well um, and it's very intuitive too uh, so it makes uh, using the software a lot more uh, exciting so the first thing to do is to sign up for a free confluence account uh, and in this account then you can try it all the all the different things that we'll be looking at in this video uh, and so what you do is you'd head up to atlation.com forward slash software and you click the button try now uh, and in the different products that you can try, uh, you should see Confluence in the list. So if I scroll down the page, I can see Confluence right here. And what you would want to do is you want to try the cloud version. So click on that. Uh, and then from here onwards, uh, it is pretty much uh, it is pretty much just a regular sign up process. It will ask you for your email address. You can pretty much just sign up using Google um, and give the access or sign up via email address and just um, uh, it's an easy sign up process and once you have access to it, it will ask you to sort of set up a site uh, which is a unique sort of name. So think of that as like your um, your custom organization. So it's your space, your home. Um, and you would give it a nice name so that you can identify that and we'll see where it actually gets applied. And after that, you might be asked to create a space. So just go ahead and create a space. Don't worry. In a few minutes, we'll take a look at what that space is and what the site is. But for now, feel free to enter the details as appropriate and create your account. Now, once you do, you should uh, head over to the home page uh, and you will sort of see uh, an empty space created um, and um, you would have access to Confluence. So the site name that you would have added will appear in the URL of, uh, of your uh, page. Uh, and so this is, so I've created the site name called Learn with Clyde uh, and that's a subdomain here. So it's Learn with Clyde net. That's how I would access my Confluence um, pages, my Atlassian products, in fact. Uh, and depending on what site name you add, let's say ABC, you would you would access your conf Confluence and Atlassian products using abc.atlassian.net. And now I have on my screen access to Confluence. And as you can see, I have created a demo space. So that is the one that I, that, I, that is the one that I created when I signed up to Confluence. So now when you create a new space, you give it a name, uh, which would be unique in your, uh, or at least the key would be unique in your um, site. 
and then you would give a space key which is a short form uh, of uh, or short identifier of your confluence space and that goes in the URL over here and so in my case the name and the key both is just demo uh, and so that's how you would access it uh, and so that's how that's just an identifier for your confluence space now if you do need to create a new confluence space so let's say now when you signed up you just created a, a dummy uh, space which is fine absolutely fine uh, we can go ahead and create a new space if we do want to and so I can click on spaces view all spaces and I would see a list of spaces here but now I want to create a new space so I'll click on create space and I'll click on the create button I will choose a blank space and then give it a space name so let me call this video um, so that's my space name and the space key which is a unique key that will be used uh, in my space URL so this has to be unique um, and I just click on create and what this will do is it will create a new confluence space for me I've just kept the default permissions as it is uh, but when it does create a new space it just adds some dummy content into uh, into my space and I can now go ahead and make the changes that I require uh, and uh, update the space to my needs I will give you a quick tour around uh, around what you're seeing on the screen right now so here you have the space and just quick links so you have overview overview page which is usually the landing page and so that's probably a good place to put key absolutely key information around your space uh, you have blog uh, which is well is just another uh, feature of conference you don't have to always write articles and knowledge base um, content but you can also just use it just has a blog uh, and so that's a feature that you can um, try out space settings is where you would go and configure different things uh, something we will take a look at space shortcuts is um, is a place for us to add links to any external sites if you want to um, and so it, these are these handy links that you may just need it right away you can always click on this add a shortcut so let's say www.google.com google add shortcut save it and there it is so when I click on Google now it will just take me to Google so um, these are the space shortcuts that you can add and then of course pages is uh, the main place where you'll actually have all of your pages uh, and so this is where we'll spend most of our time in this video uh, we will create new pages and we will have a look at all of the all of the things that go around it now if I have to look at the navigation bar I see that I have this option here to switch to different products I have a few other options here uh, which is spaces if I have to switch between two different spaces uh, people apps templates uh, and just some recent pages or or things that I've been working on and of course there's this big blue button uh, and we'll see what this button does uh, we'll come back to search in uh, in a few minutes um, in, in a later section of this video um, this one is notifications help settings which is your Atlassian settings uh, and then your own profile um, and we'll have a look at a few items in this space later so that was the quick overview uh, now that you know all of all of this you would be asking okay so how do I what do I use my spaces for what is this confluence space really now space is uh, so imagine your site in this case this is learn with client.atlation.net so that's your sort of parent container if you can if you can think of it that way and in that container you would want to keep objects um, and in this case each space is like that one object that you want to store in that container now this object can hold information about that object only uh, and now the that's probably the best practice the best way is to use 
a confluence space for one specific purpose so maybe it is at one specific product um, that you're working on uh, or that one specific team that you're part of that would be one confluence space and everything all the pages under that space would sort of fit in that context now let's say if you had a different product uh, then you would create a new confluence space for that product and have all those pages specifically uh, written for that product in that space uh, so that's confluence spaces for you so you have the site and then an inside that you have different spaces that reside inside that site the next thing that we'll take a look at is creating pages and more information around pages like formatting a page formatting the text content in the page and uploading attachments to a page uh, so let's take a look at that to create a page what you do is under the pages section here we will create uh, click on the plus icon to create a new page and this opens up a new page template now we can at this moment we'll just take a look at uh, creating uh, a page from a blank canvas like this uh, but in the future we'll also take a look at using one of these templates so let's say this page is hello world so that's your title and then uh, this is pretty much the hello world contents now you can go ahead and publish this directly and that will create a new page so there you go that's one page under the pages section now I can click on the pencil icon to edit this page and I can always go ahead and update it so things like I can always say I want a heading I want a heading over here uh, and then over here I want um, I want an image so to do that to add an image over here I can click on this icon to open up a pop-up and then choose an image and just add it what it'll do is it'll add this image here and now I can always resize it uh, to how whatever fits best um, I can always add a caption all text add a link for so that when you click this image it'll go to the particular link uh, and so on and so forth so a few formatting options for this image but now you would notice that this heading is not really a heading right now it's right it's just a plain text so now I have a few options to format my text if you open up this drop down you would have different types of headings it's available I can click on heading which is quite a big heading big font size or I can select any one of the other ones so now I've selected heading 2 which I think it's it's fine so I'll, I'll just stick I'll just stick with this in terms of the content I, I I want to change the formatting of this text here so to do that I have a few options I have these options in my toolbar and so that's something that we can take a look things like bold italics if I click on the three dots I have a few more options which uh, you can click on and give it a try as well now I can change the directions I can make something center aligned or right aligned I can change the color of the text so if I select it I can change the color to something else um, what I can also do is I can make this a bullet point or maybe not so toggle in toggle out um, I can make this an action item um, and if I and this becomes like a checkbox or if I don't want that I can delete this checkbox so that goes away and then a few other options like adding a link uh, so this is if I want to link it to an external site or to an existing page I can do that and then I can also mention people so if I click on the add um, uh, that character on my keyboard I will have the names of the people so I can just search for somebody and just select the person so that that person gets tagged in the page and gets notified about this mention so those are a few sort of formatting options that's available now I can go ahead and publish it again 
or if I open up the three dots, I have a few more options. So I can publish without notifying watchers, I can publish with version comments, um, or I can schedule publish. So that's in the future date. For now, what we'll do is we'll just click on publishing without notifying watchers so that nobody else who has subscribed to the changes on the site is notified about these changes. Otherwise, they will get an email or, or any other notification uh, when any changes have been made. So let's click on publish without notifying watchers and that um, publishes the page. Now what you notice is that all the formatting has been applied as you would expect. Um, I can see a sort of clip clipboard icon here or clip icon here. I can copy link to this particular heading so that if I open up a new tab paste that link, you can see that it is automatically added heading to it. So if I click on it, it will scroll down the page basically to that heading. Now obviously the contents in this page is very limited so you won't um, immediately see the effect of this. But imagine if this was a huge long page, I can copy a link to this specific heading and share it with people uh, and then Basically, whenever they click on that, their focus will be redirected to just that specific heading uh, without having to scroll anywhere. Now, if I edit this page again, uh, there are a few more options uh, to be able to, um, to, to basically edit your content or to format your content. So the first one uh, is using slash shortcuts. So if I do a forward slash, I can just type in heading. I can select whatever heading I want and then straight away type my new heading. So this is my new heading. Now as you can see, this means you don't have to use your mouse at all. With the keyboard itself, you can completely uh, format all your contents. Now let's say if I already had a content, if I already had the text. Now what I can do is I can select the text and then click on Control Alt 1 and that will, um, you, because of this keyboard shortcut, will format the text as a heading 1. And so for all of these options you might have uh, keyboard shortcuts. So click on it and have a look at what keyboard shortcut has been assigned uh, and Whatever keyboard shortcut has been assigned, give it a try and format your content. Now over here, we have added an image, but of course you're not restricted to just images. You can also add files. To do so, let's click on this icon again, uh, and this time we'll upload a uh, note file, a text file. And as you can see, there's this file that got uploaded that's great. Um, it's going to try and create a preview, uh, but that's fine. We don't really, uh, we don't really want a preview at this stage. So this, that demo is just to basically show you that you can uh, upload different types of files, um, and depending on what type of files you upload, you can actually even view the contents of it. So if you upload a PDF file, for example, you can view the contents of the PDF and also search the contents of that PDF. Now coming back to the slash shortcuts that we used, we can use these slash shortcuts to do a lot more. So for starters, let's take a look at slash emoji. This will allow us to automatically add different types of emojis that you might want. So you can choose and click from the option or you can click on emoji and then just start typing the thing that you, the emoji that you're planning to add. So let's say if I say inbox, um, it gets filtered down to that emoji, select it and that, that's how I can add an emoji. What I can also do now is use a forward slash and add a status label. So if I click on status, I can say that some activity that I'm doing is in progress and I can choose different colors for this label. Uh, so let's say if I choose yellow and that's what it is, 
uh, let's say something was done you can mark an item as done by adding a label maybe uh, formatting it as a green color and um, letting this label do its job so label itself does not really change any functionality but it's just a visual way uh, for us to identify different things um, so you might want to label a few things um, and this is just one example that I showed uh, but of course um, it's important to note that you can use labels to to categorize few things to label a few things uh, and also give different colors so it is it is visually uh, it looks different uh, and it and it uh, gives you more information the next thing we'll take a look at is info panels so if I click on forward slash and click on info I have an info panel that have been added uh, I can type content here content inside content inside the info panel by default it is a blue info panel but I have the option to change this to a note I have the option to change this to a success message to a warning message or to an error message so depending think of what content you would like um, and depending on that if you would like to add these panels it's quite useful uh, because visually it adds these this a very distinguishing element onto your screen after this what we'll take a look at is code snippets so if I select code I can type in and pretty much enter any code that I might have so by adding code snippets and setting the the correct language in which this code was written uh, you you would see syntax highlightings available um, and of course it's not available now uh, in in this view but once we publish this page uh, you will see that uh, this particular code would have the appropriate syntax highlights uh, and so obviously there's heaps and heaps of languages available already in that drop down uh, and so depending on what code you're entering do try and select the correct language from this drop down now the other thing that we look at is using a collapsible content so to do that let's search for expand and this will give us an option to add a collapsible content uh, so in here you can call this something like FAQ title um, for example and then this is the FAQ content and so when I publish this page what will happen is it will show me the same content in a collapsible section I can expand this content and view view the rest of the information so this is useful if you have things like FAQs or other questions that you just want just the questions has the titles but not really the answers um, well the answers are hidden away uh, and that saves a lot of space and confluence as well uh, so you might want to use those things for information that you don't really want it to be displayed right away uh, just hidden away so that once you click on this menu you can see all the information in the collapsible content area and then the next thing that we'll take a look at is layout so we'll click on layouts and now you have the option to add a two column layout so I can say column one and this is column two now there's a few other options here you can make it three columns you can change how these two columns are, are distributed uh, and how the three columns are distributed so you have some options here uh, depending on what uh, what format you want how you want the page to look like depending on that I'd encourage you to use layouts and, and choose a different column type and no matter what layout you choose uh, inside each and each of these columns the content editing experience is exactly the same so you can continue to use um, your slash commands um, and add content as you would in a normal layout um, so do give it a try because this it's quite useful to have things like this in place uh, it, it uh, definitely helps with the formatting of your page a lot because imagine you could have regular content in the center and a sidebar information with some more helpful content in place in the same page 
Uh, so do give layouts a try. Now one thing you might have been curious about is that in almost all these text content areas uh, I have this um, option here and this is called a go wide button uh, and if I click on this it basically expands the width uh, of the contents on this page uh, and allows me to use a full width option rather than a narrow width uh, so it's useful uh, when you want to use all of the area available to write your content uh, instead of going narrow screens uh, so if, now if I publish this you would see the difference so your column 1 starts from a uh, far left whereas the rest of the content is sort of center aligned with a lot of width uh, to the left and right of the content so that is a difference between using go wide and and using narrow that's it for this video i hope you liked this part of the crash course if you do please please do like share and subscribe um, and of course in the comments down below let me know uh, your thoughts about confluence and your thoughts about this uh, part or this tutorial on confluence uh, and of course do stay tuned for the next part in this series uh, it will be coming out soon uh, depending on when you're watching this video and so the best thing to do is check out the playlist the confluence crash course playlist on my youtube channel that will have all the parts in it thanks for watching this video and see you again very soon